The latest spending bill to fund the government is now on the way to the president's desk. But the government shutdown that went into effect at midnight isn't over until the president signs the legislation. Hinadoba has the latest on all the overnight drama on Capitol Hill. Most reconsiders laid upon the table. The House has passed the budget compromise that cleared the Senate earlier this morning. This agreement accomplishes getting the resources that we need to rebuild our military. But also, this includes long-delayed disaster funding to aid recovery from the hurricanes and the wildfires. Money to fight opioids, something that knows no partisan boundaries. The yeas are 71, the nays are 28. At about 2 a.m. today, the Senate approved a budget deal, but it was not in time to avoid a second government shutdown this year. That deadline was midnight. I object. Late last night, Republican sure. Senator Rand Paul repeatedly objected to calls for a vote before 1 a.m. Paul did so to protest what he called runaway government spending. The hypocrisy is astounding. Every one of these Republicans complained about President Obama's deficits, and yet now we have them out there bragging and pushing and doing everything they can to get their trillion dollar deficit through. Fellow Republican Senator John Cornyn, who was trying to get the vote to the floor before midnight, blamed Paul for missing the deadline. The senator from Kentucky, by objecting to the unanimous consent request, will effectively shut down the federal government for no real reason. The outcome will be exactly the same. The budget deal that passed, though, only funds the government for another six weeks, meaning if lawmakers can't work out a longer term deal in that time, the government could face a third shutdown. And Adoba, CBS News. And now in other news, it took two failed bid attempts before the city of Pyeongchang was finally awarded an Olympic game. Seven years later, the 2018 Winter Olympics are about to get underway in South Korea. But is the city ready? Dana Jacobson joins us from Pyeongchang with more. The tiny ski resort city of Pyeongchang is finally seeing its dream to host the Olympics come to life. Pyeongchang is ready to welcome the world. Everything is ready. This fish restaurant's been around for 20 years and expects the Olympics to bring record business. Family owned and operated, they are worried about keeping up with demand. They've had to turn down reservations because they are already booked on most days of the games. Just up the street, it's only week three of business for this restaurant, but there are similar concerns. The owner isn't taking reservations because she wants to be able to handle the heavy foot traffic. The crowd concerns aren't just about feeding everyone, it's also about keeping people moving here on the sidewalks and also on the streets. Pyeongchang's police chief says the massive crowds could bring traffic to a halt. This command center will watch for potential problems with 1,500 people assigned to manage movement on the roads. With security a top priority, terror threat drills have taken place, rehearsing scenarios from chemical bombs at Olympic venues to potential drone strikes. 13,000 police officers will be used daily in the city, with 60,000 security personnel throughout the Olympic areas, all with the same goal, keeping athletes and spectators safe. Dana Jacobson, CBS News, Pyeongchang, South Korea. And security has taken a hit even before the official start of the Olympics. 1,200 security guards had to be pulled from duty because of concerns over the norovirus. 900 military personnel brought, were brought in to replace them. Closer to home, Billings and the eastern side of the state is waking up to snow-covered streets this morning. Between 4 to 6 inches fell in Billings overnight, with more snow falling to the east of us. Miles City reported 8 inches as of last night. Overall snowfall was heavier to the east and lighter to the west. This comes after yesterday's freezing rain coated the streets, leading to multiple crashes and slide-offs. A winter storm warning is in effect until 11 o'clock tonight. Authorities are asking drivers to take caution, slow down, and allow plenty of time to reach your destination. City plowing crews were out overnight, and CMG began clearing south side residential streets around midnight. The cold temperatures will last through the weekend, but the snow will taper off today. 
Well, there's no school today or Monday for Billings School District 2 as planned for a holiday weekend, but other schools in the area are calling it a snow day. St. LeBray Catholic Schools, Pretty Eagle School, St. Charles Mission School, and Lame Deer Public Schools all called it a, school, a snow day. All activities are also canceled for the day. And buses in Laurel will have a late start today due to road conditions at 10 o'clock. An investigative report says the Westmoreland Coal Company is to blame for a mine worker's death last May. 62-year-old Michael Ramsey was killed when the haul truck he was driving tumbled 150 feet down the high wall. As Ramsey was dumping his 98-ton load of dirt and rock, the ground gave way, gave way beneath. The report states Westmoreland Coal had knowledge of the unsafe dumping practice at the Rosebud Mine. Company policy states that no equipment shall work on top of the high wall within 25 feet. Trucks are to dump short and bulldozers then finish pushing the material over the edge. The Mine Safety and Health Administration's corrective action states trucks will not dump over the high wall under any circumstances. Ramsey had more than 10 years experience and had completed annual refresher training just one month before the incident. Meanwhile, Montana Secretary of State made a stop in Billings to talk about the importance of getting involved. Corey Stapleton spent time with seniors at West High on Thursday answering their questions. From social media to Indian reservations and health care, Stapleton's main message to students was the importance of their involvement to our country's democracy and making sure they stay informed. If you're not careful, you only follow or like or are in groups of things that agree with your predispositions anyway. The danger is you get something called confirmation bias. You're just listening and hearing people say things that you already kind of think. And that's dangerous in a democracy because until you actually listen to both sides, or in, in some cases many sides, you're not as informed of a voter and you're not probably as productive of a citizen as you could be. Stapleton says with social media there are so many distractions and it's important to do your research and know the issues beyond the headlines. Now we go to Glacier National Park where a conservancy group is looking to restore the historic Sperry Chalet that was partially destroyed by a wildfire this past summer. The interior was destroyed but the stone walls are still standing. The Glacier National Park Conservancy has done some fundraising and will monitor the chalet throughout the winter. They will begin clearing the trail in June and construction work will begin in 2019. They're also looking to put the Capitol Christmas tree that was that traveled to DC on display in the chalet. It's ready to be milled and the Conservancy will continue with fundraising to help with restoration. Back here in Billings, over 50 teams and 600 wrestlers are all chasing one dream, a state title. Today kicks off the all-class state wrestling tournament at the Rimrock Auto Arena. The mats were put in place yesterday morning and the teams arrived Thursday afternoon for one last practice session. After a summer full of camps and a winter of duels, it all comes down to the next two days. The Parade of Champions kicks it all off this morning at 10 o'clock. We'll have full coverage right here on Q2 of Day 1 in your evening sports at 5.30 and 10. And you can follow all the action at montanasports.com. Well, thank you so much.